Okay, so we still want to find the exact area. Now we're not going to do this with limit process because now we notice that we're working with our new notation now. What we haven't learned yet up to this point in the course, we haven't learned how to actually do this with antiderivatives. So here's another way you can find an area under a curve. If we graph it, we might be able to find a specific geometry formula specific to this problem that we can use in order to get the exact area. So we are going to be getting the exact area here, not an estimation, and we're going to be using geometry formulas. The first thing we have to do is graph this because we don't know what kind of formula to apply. So notice that we're working only between the x values of 0 and 2, and this is the function that we want to graph. Now if you remember this from algebra, this is y equals mx plus b form, which means that the first thing I want to do is plot the 4 because the 4 is your y-intercept. Negative 2 is going to be your slope. So we can write that as negative 2 over 1, rise over 1. So from here we're going to go down 2 over 1, and then down 2 over 1, we bring it down to here. So then the line is drawn like that. Now when they ask for area under the curve, they're only assuming that you're talking about the area above the x-axis essentially. So in this case, my actual area is going to be this triangle right here. That's the actual, that would be the graph that would go with it. The shaded area is what we're actually going to be finding. Now how do we find that area? Well we're going to apply a geometry formula. Remember from geometry that the area of a triangle area equals one half base times the height. The base is going to be two and your height is going to be four. We can just put that right in there base of 2 and a height of 4, and then when we work that out, we're going to get 4 square units as our actual area. So then all this right here, that would just basically equal 4 because we apply the geometry formula. So now let's take a look at another one. Okay, so here's another one we're going to work with for finding the same thing. We want to graph it first and then apply a geometry formula. Now, if you haven't seen or worked too much with these kind of graphs before, if you see a square root of something in a minus x squared, that's a semicircle. So specifically what it looks like is we're going to be graphing it between negative 3 and 3. This here, if you take the square root of 9, that's 3, that's going to become the radius of your circle. So this the way it works, and all of them of this type are going to be graphed that way. If you had a 4 here, 4 minus x squared, then 2 would be the radius. But essentially it's, it's going to be going through just like it'll go through like this, so it'll come up here and then end there. So the domain is only between negative 3 and 3 because if you put anything outside of that, it's not going to work inside there. And we're only considering the positive square root, so we're not going to do the bottom part also because we didn't take the square root of anything. What we did here is we're only considering the positive square root, which is why you only see the top portion when you graph that. So the, the, uh, the actual area is going to be basically all this right inside here so it's just just the semicircle only and you want to find the area of that all right now this is uh, it's half of a circle so we have to definitely start with the area of a circle formula which is going to be pi r squared however since we are only dealing with a semicircle I only want half the area of a circle. So this is the specific formula I'm going to use in this problem. I want to take half of the area of a circle with the radius of 3. So when I put that in I get 1 half pi times 3 squared and then I'm going to work that out. My exact area is going to be 9 halves pi and you could leave it like that or convert to a decimal if you want to but that would be the exact area.